First of all, gentlemen, I really want to start with a sincere congratulations. I watched this last night. I laughed a lot. Not a little, a lot. You guys, uh, thank you for that. Thanks. Man. Oh, man. Thank Thanks for the kind words. I appreciate it. So the first question, I like throwing some curveballs at the beginning of every interview. First question comes from Arzu, who writes for Collider. Love her. She's great. Uh, this is for you. Uh, ever since I found out John Cena's wife is Persian, I'm dying to know what his favorite Persian food is. Oh, it's uh, definitely uh, tachim and uh, kubude. By a mile? By a mile. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I do I not know, know what this food is, but I'm... She asked the question, she'll know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, a, a, well, a, well, a well-made tachin is uh, something that needs to be done with love, and that's usually a homemade dish. That's why I love it. And uh, Rosh de Polo is always another, is another good one of mine, another, another favorite of mine. Um, the downfall of that is when, whenever I go see the family, uh, I usually gain about five or 10 pounds. I got to cut off because Persian food is, <laughs> is meat and rice or meat and potatoes. And that's, uh, you can't stop eating it. But those are uh, Roche de Polo, Tachin, and uh, Kubade. Those are my three favorites. I'm starving right now. <laughs> oh, and a good, all Persians will tell you, a good Sangak, a good bread. To the next thing, uh, there's going to be people out there that have never seen anything either of you guys have done. Besides this film, which of course they need to see, what is the first thing you'd like them to watch and why? Man. Yeah, Ricky Sting. You yeah, no, of course. Size. That's the oh, easy. Well, that's the easy one. I want people to see it. But from your resume, what other film or project would you like them to see? Ooh, uh, I'm trying to think of one that went under the radar. Uh, I was with, I was with uh, um, oh geez, you go first. You go first. I no, you it. said. I mean, you had something, but I'll take it if you want. Uh, the High School Musical. There we go. Okay, it's a good. Good Go, going back to the beginning. Yeah. And I'll do the same thing. I will say uh, my debut in WWE television in June of 2002, a match against Kurt Angle, because... Uh, oh, my gosh. I is, have to see this. It is a really interesting look at something that really wasn't successful and didn't work, but you get to see a, a younger me and kind of see the the before and then the after photo. So, oh, man. I can't wait to check that out. Uh, one of the things is, I, what is it like reading a script like this for the first time and you seeing your character with jizz jams, with all the different jokes that are in there? By the way, I can't believe I get to say jizz jams in a junket. Yeah. yeah, it's totally legit. Um, but seriously, what is it like reading something like this for the first time? For me, um, I don't necessarily read it for, I don't read it through the eyes of me. I read it as a story. Mm -hmm. And I love reading scripts as stories. And I have a rule, if I put it down, I should think twice. Yeah. Like I get in a good mindset when I pick it up. I know it's what I want to do. Like this is my story time. I, I enjoy reading. And if I can't get through 120 pages, no matter how many stage directions, and if it's not riveting and I put it down, if I put it down once, I got some second thoughts. If I pick it up again and put it down again, it's, it's out. And that's not to say it's bad. It's just to say it doesn't move me. And this was one where it's like you're through it and it's over. And then you go again and it's over. And then you start realizing like, oh, I can be that and then you start diving into that perspective but just to give you a, an alternative example i read all eight episodes of peacemaker as it's one stapled folder wow yeah. and it's just a story you can't put down so when it, when it's something like that when it's got that gravity to it this was an easy read there's like 115 pages of just pure comedy and heart it's very true yeah if you, if you sometimes you can drift off into you know if, if you know you're up for a character you know a specific one you can kind of drift and start thinking about the motivation of the character and reading the lines out loud and you'll be stuck on the same page you know i never finish the script because you'll be stuck on it for an hour thinking about what the scene's about but with this one it all just made sense it clicked it was very well written and uh it was the kind of thing you just know pete's gonna nail so well, one of the things that he does so well is he has these he makes films that have like filthy filthy moments but with characters with heart and redemption and i think that's his secret sauce right I think that's very well said. I would completely agree with you. You, you want to root for these guys. You, you want to root for all of these characters. You want to see them do, you want to see them be the, their best selves. This movie has a lot of funny parts. What's the one thing you're really looking forward to audiences seeing without spoilers? I think uh, all of Rock Hard Rod's uh, impersonations <laughs> are next level. They're really, really funny. Man. I, no one's seen anything like this in a long time. There's there's a lot of cool moments. I think I think William H. Macy does a tremendous job. I That's think it. I think his uh I think there's going to be a lot of internet information on him coming out. I hope he's ready for that tidal wave because I think that that's happening too. It's so funny to have 
William H. Macy. He's such a heavy hitter in this role. It's and, so and, good. And Nobody man, knows, knows about a it. True pro. And like you want to yeah. talk about commitment to the bit. And I can't wait for people to see it. I, I brought up, I, I don't want to spoil it in this, but I brought up what he does uh, on camera with him and the concept of being, the, the fact that I could say those words on camera sure. and in a junket and yep. not be thrown out, you know. Works. Yeah. yeah it's, but I, I gotta, I have to ask you, you've done a lot of stuff in your career and when you're doing those impressions with those costumes, was were you actually a little nervous? Were you like, what is it like um, to, you know man, what I mean? We, we've talked a bunch. I'm nervous every time we talk. Like I get ner- I get nervous for everything. It's just a matter of like those impressions. I don't sing, I don't do impressions. It's a matter of saying, I'm gonna give it a try and see where we land. And that's what's beautiful about Peter and that's what's great about my, my castmates. Anytime you, you try something, you take a big swing and people make you feel uncool or like you're not good enough, you're never gonna do it again. Yeah, right. When you're in an environment where they welcome the misses and they'll, they'll hang in there with you until you get something that's passable, Man, that's where you can really grow as a performer and as a human being. Yeah. So it's the the costume department set me up not to fail. The wigs, the makeup were great. Peter was great. You know, they gave me about as much sizzle for my steak as I could have. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm grateful to everybody. And you stay committed, man. That's that's what it's all about. You got to stay committed. Yep. And eventually something, something good is going to come out. Yep. Yeah. Did you get to leave set as Brittany and walk around or any of those outfits just to see what the reaction would be? So there was a lot of long lens cameras that caught me in the Brittany costume without right. the wig. Right. And yeah. boy, did that make its way around the media for a hot second when I guess it was a day that there's nothing else to talk about. But yeah, that was the one costume they got me in. I, I kind of hid in all the rest of the ones. And we filmed Britney towards the end of the day, and for some reason they just caught me in it. And uh, boy, did everybody have a field day with that one. Especially in Australia, because yeah. it's relatively small yeah. country, country population-wise. And yeah, that was from a while. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you guys have both done a lot of cool stuff. What do you think, the night before the first day of filming something, what do you think was the night that you were like the most nervous for the, for the first day of filming something? Ooh, good question. Um, Honestly, I was the most nervous I've ever been is uh, the night before hosting the ESPYs, just because that's a room that right. I'm I'm neither a sportsman nor an entertainer at that point. I'm a sports entertainer, which is like neither right. one, right. and I'm supposed to be doing a bit on all the people in the crowd. So that yeah, was yeah. the most I've the live hosting gig in front of an audience that sometimes is like, who the f is this guy? That was a uh, that was the most nervous I've ever been. I, th- I think Saturday Night Live was another one. Yeah. yeah, dude. Like we we had no we those most of those skits we had never tried until the day. Like I'd never even read the cue cards. Mm. Like we just we were like, this is happening. We never tried the costumes on. We just went out there and did it. It was literally just reading the cards. It's wild. We prep we, we prep all week and then they throw it out the window on the very last minute. <laughs> and you just tried brand new shit. It was wild. I can't believe any of it worked. On that note, I got to go. Congratulations yeah. on this film. Thank Thanks. you for making me laugh. 